So you guys know the RTX 4070 Super just launched and there's tons of reviews out there. I think most people don't have $600 to spend on a graphics card. Disappointing. If prices align how they are, then it is going to be a pretty good value. My thoughts on the 4070 Super are gonna depend pretty much entirely on what it ends up costing in the actual retail market. And 4070 always should have been this card from the start. So I can't help but feel as though this is what the RTX 4070 should have been from the start. This step should have been done already with the RTX 4070. What I actually did, review the reviews and I compiled a whole, whole bunch of data to get like a meta analysis uh, if the 4070 Super is good compared to the other cards or if you should just consider a different option entirely. I just wanna point out, cause this is the day that the 4070 Super actually launched. You can go on a website like PC Part Picker and you can see that these cards are out here and some of them are at MSRP of $600. And you can go to a website like Newegg and see that there is a $600 4070 Super. Or if you check out this Zotac model, it's also at $600 right now. So these cards are available and you can buy them. And that's why it's important to check if we should actually be getting these cards or not. I compiled results from four different review outlets, mainly because of a time thing. And these review outlets are Gamers Nexus, Jay's Two Cents, Daniel Owen, and hardware unbox. Just thank these people for doing all the work that they do that takes a long time to do testing. What I did is I took the average of the results in all of their testing to see what the performance difference between a card like say like the 4070 Super and the original 4070 is. Then we can also check the price to see how the price stacks up against the performance. I have to point out this data was taken from their 1440p high slash ultra settings that each of these reviewers did because this is mainly the range that you'd be using the 4070 super in okay go back just hide everything else and let's just start off with the rtx 4070. now there is a 50 dollars price difference between these cards that means the 4070 original is 92 percent the price of the 4070 super and we check out the average the big number is rasterization performance so not ray tracing it's about 87% the performance of the 4070 Super. And when we compare the price down here to the performance, that means that the 4070 original is worse value than the 4070 Super because you want this price number percentage to be lower than the performance number. And the pr price of the 4070, Nvidia did not lie. This has had a official price cut to $550. That's where it's sitting on the market. I don't expect this to change at all, but definitely the 4070 Super is a better value. So if you can make that $50 leap, it's going to be worth every penny technically if you wanna be on Nvidia. But, but what if you don't wanna be on Nvidia? What if you wanna be on AMD? to get any AMD advantages, say for example, the 16 gigabytes of VRAM on the 7800 XT. Now, on average from the different review outlets, it is 93% the performance of the 4070 Super. But, but the 7800 XT is costing $500. So that's $100 less than the $600 4070 Super. This does hold true. But not that long ago, before the actual 4070 Super launched, these 7800 XTs were going for more like more like $520, $530, but they have returned to their original MSRP of $500. Comparatively by price, the 7800 XT is a much better deal if you just are after raw performance. Now, there's been some different takes here. Like Daniel Owen talked about the 7800 XT versus the 4070. So the 4070 Super is more than justifying its 20% price increase, uh, often 20 or 30% faster. Because DLSS, you know, I've tested this quite a bit. DLSS looks quite a bit better than FSR. And in certain games, if you need to use upscaling, you know, theoretically make the 4070 Super faster than the 7800 XT. Because what if there's a game that FSR looks bad in and you don't want to turn on FSR upscaling, but DLSS honestly across the board looks really good. They're getting similar amounts of performance, but there is some Nvidia advantages like that. And also if we look at the smaller number that is the ray tracing number, you can see that 7800 XT on average 
was about 80% of the ray tracing performance. That might matter to you. But yeah, you're paying like $600 for a card. You could expect to be using ray tracing in a lot of games. So there's definitely an argument to be getting the 4070 Super, even though it does cost $100 more. Now, what does AMD have to offer? Really just the VRAM. 16 gigabytes is very important. And something I did notice that really frustrated me, a torn down 4070 Super. And this is just disappointing. See, this is the main GPU die. These little things that surround it are the RAM. There's little RAM chips down here and each of them should be two gigabytes. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And that would make 12 gigabytes of RAM because they each have two gigabytes on them. And then there's two more little, little spots where you could where you could put more chips. They're just right there. They're ready to be soldered on the board, you know? I wish at $600 that you'd be getting a 16 gigabyte card, but at least it's faster than what the 4070 originally was at that price point. Now, I know this could be for a variety of reasons, like obviously because this is a cut down chip, maybe the memory interface isn't working on these chips or it isn't as fully fledged. So that could be why these are excluded. But regardless, it's still disappointing just to see that it could have been. There is advantages to getting the 7800 XT at $500. Kind of does suck because I wish AMD would drop the price of the 7800 XT. Imagine this card at $450. That would be that would be that would be really cool. But I don't think AMD is going to feel pressured to do that because yeah, it does come in at like 10% better value here. If you just look at these numbers and you get 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Like there's a clear argument to still get the 7800 XT. And uh, it's really up to you, depending what kind of games that you play. If you're going to be playing games with a lot of ray tracing in it, and you really want to take advantage of DLSS upscaling, the 4070 Super, it's probably worth paying the extra money for it. And that's probably going to burn a hole in your pocket, but it's just true. It just is what it is. But the 7800 XT, if you're after just raw performance, you don't really care about ray tracing, you're not ever going to be using upscaling. Like the 7800 XT makes a great value proposition. And if we do look at these in terms of power efficiency, because that is another argument to buy Nvidia. Honestly, the 4070 Super is here in green and the 7800 XT is here in red. Now this is full system power. So the, the actual power is a lot higher. 30 watt difference between these cards. That's really not that bad. Like the 7800 XT is still a very efficient card. So you shouldn't be that concerned about power efficiency on these. You're like, I don't want to buy used cards. I want to get the best value possible. And that's worth the RTX 3080 comes in and actually the 6800 XT, which we're going to talk about in just a second after. Because if you compare this to the 4070 Super, it's 91% the performance of that card. That's pretty close, 10%. And if you compare the price of this card, $450 for this card. But yeah, it's only 75% the price of the 4070 Super, performing at 91%. So you're getting most of the performance of the 4070 Super for significantly less, $150 less. You're not going to be getting frame generation like on the 40 series cards from NVIDIA, which might matter to you. I haven't even tested NVIDIA's frame generation yet. Maybe it's good. I've tested AMD's and the RTX 3080 FSR 3 frame generation is pretty good. Like I can't really complain about it. So if you just want to use AMD's fallback, it's not bad at all. Also, the RTX 3080 has 10 gigabytes of VRAM. 10 versus 12 doesn't sound like a lot, but it can really make a difference in some games is that the RTX 3080 does like draw a lot of power. The 4070 Super is drawing about 360 watts and it's performing faster than the 3080. But if you go all the way down here, the 3080 is drawing 477 watts in the total system load and it's performing a little bit slower. There's some things to take into account. It's not only that you're buying the card used, which can come with its own caveats. Like, is it going to be working when you buy it? You know, is, but if you're after value, this might be an option for you. It does have a lot higher power consumption and two gigabytes less VRAM could definitely matter in some games. This is an option. I'm just not saying that it's the best option. Now, one that's maybe a little bit more compelling for a lot of you guys is actually AMD's last generation part, the 6800 XT. 90% the performance of the 4070 Super. I think on Gamers Nexus is one, they have a really good 6800 XT, like it's a really fast one. I, I would kind of call that one an anomaly, but you can see that this card is offering 90% of the performance on average from these different reviews while costing 72% the price <clears throat> on the used market. These cards are, you can find them for about $430 right now. And it has the advantage that the 4070 Super doesn't. It has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And I have this card, I've tested it 
having more VRAM on these cards, like the 6800 XT and the 7800 XT, very welcome addition to these cards. It just gives you that peace of mind that at 1440p ultra settings, you're pretty much never gonna have issues with VRAM. Obviously, these same caveats apply with the 7800 XT. You're not getting DLSS. And if you look at the ray tracing performance, you can see that it's like 80% that of the 4070 Super. So if you're going to be doing any ray tracing, if you want to take advantage of DLSS, you're going to have some problems with that. There is some arguments uh, for the power efficiency of this card. So you can see here that there's 358 watts in the 4070 Super. And here is the 6800 XT at 448 watts, quite a bit more power, like 100 more watts of power. If power is like an issue in your area, then the, the 6800 XT might not be a good option. You might actually save money over time by getting the 4070 Super. The 6800 XT is a surprisingly pretty solid deal in the used market. It's just, I don't know if the, the risk is worth it right now. I feel like the price gap would need to be a little bit bigger than this, but it's not terrible. Definitely something to consider. But what this also does put into perspective with these older cards, I don't think that you need to make the leap from these cards to this card. It, it doesn't translate to that much performance, way to generation, or you'd have to spend more to actually get more performance, which definitely hurts especially when we talk about the 4070 Ti. Now, NVIDIA is discontinuing the original 4070 Ti and actually replacing it with the Super version of that card. So the 4070 Super is actually basically a 4070 Ti. You can see on average 8% faster on the 4070 Ti while costing $740 versus $600 on the 4070 Super. So 23% more money for this card for only 8% more performance definitely is not worth the price jump. And I am wondering, because we can we can actually look on the market right now, we've seen that prices on 4070 Ti's brand new have been dropping. I took the average of about $740 because that's about where they're at. But this card used to cost like consistently like $770 or so. We can see that this has dropped significantly in a very short amount of time. This might become a very good value card for the rest of time that they're manufacturing it, which is over now, but like until all the stock sells out. So definitely keep your eye on it. It might be good, but at the current value on the market, it's just not that good. And I can't recommend buying this over just paying $140 less and getting the 4070 Super. Onto the big boy. This is our fastest card in the list. 18% more money at $710 while giving you about 18% more performance. So you kind of get even scaling. If you pay more money, you get more performance. Plus the 7900 XT has 20 gigabytes of VRAM. Now I think most of the time with these other 800 XT cards at 16 gigabytes is probably enough, especially for 1440p. But the 20 gigabytes is just even more peace of mind. And if you use very memory intensive applications on your computer, then you know who you are. You know, 20 gigabytes of VRAM is definitely nice to have and just you don't got to think about it. you. You would never have to think about VRAM. That is so much. That, that's almost as much system RAM as a lot of people have. You can see that you get even scaling for price and performance. But that's one of the arguments why I think the 7900 XT is probably going to change the most in price here. So NVIDIA is also releasing the 4070 Ti Super, which is going to be significantly faster than the 4070 Super and has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And that card's gonna be coming in at $800. So currently we're seeing the 7900 XT coming in at $710, about 720 or so. We can see some pricing adjustments in a short time here. So. I'm just tracking the ASRock card here because it's usually one of the cheaper cards from AMD here. You can see that there has been a major price cut just within the past few days, okay? Definitely keep your eye on this card. It is going to be dropping in price. I expect it to drop probably again. I think the lowest we're going to see the 7900 XT go is $650. I don't see the advantage of buying the 7900 XT over the 4070 Super. When you get even scaling, you know, you're getting NVIDIA's DLSS features, slightly better power efficiency. Now, what's interesting is, at least in the ray tracing that I saw from these reviewers, it seems like the 7900 XT is actually faster at ray tracing than the 4070 Super, which is something a little bit unexpected, but that's nice, actually. So you're not losing out on ray tracing if you do end up paying for the AMD card. Basically, what we can learn from the uh, the reviews that are reviewed about the 4070 Super. The 4070 Super is a decent value. It's not mind-blowingly good, 
but it is pretty solid for the price but also probably what we always should have had for the 4070s like the original 4070 but if you're shopping in this price range and you definitely value things like dlss ray tracing then nvidia's card is a good like competitor here amd is still very competitive at 500 dollars right now but I would love to see this car come to like $450 and that would just be a knockout at that price point. 4070 Super reviews reviewed. I hope this could help you out and stuff because it can be hard to break all this stuff down. And what I did is I compiled all this data and tried to get a clearer picture of what the card actually is to clear the waters a little bit. Let me know what you think about the 4070 Super in the comments. Like, is it exciting? Is it not exciting? From polls with stream chat when we broke this down live, I, what most people were saying is that it seems okay, but not earth shatteringly good or anything like that, the 4070 Super. I don't think people are gonna be busting on doors to buy it, but let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Y'all have a good one and uh, peace out.